We may not be at home, but we did finally get our hands on the 2017 Chrysler Pacifica for a full week. We've been down here in Los Angeles driving Chrysler's brand new minivan and the replacement for the long running town and country. For 2017, Chrysler decided to do something a little bit unusual. The Pacifica is the all new minivan. Everything about this vehicle is brand new, but they're also still selling the Dodge Caravan. So if you want the older minivan and you want a better deal on it, you can go to the Dodge dealer. If you want the all new Chrysler Pacifica with all the bells and whistles, head on over to the Chrysler dealer. The overall design of the Pacifica is closer to the Chrysler 200 than the Chrysler 300. So instead of a bold brash grille, we have this very fluid line going on right here. Halogen headlamps are standard, but HIDs are optional, fog lamps are optional, and LED fog lamps are also optional. We are not driving the absolute top end trim, but this is near to it, and therefore we do have a radar adaptive cruise control sensor right there in the middle of that lower grille. Minivans are all about practicality and, of course, the enormous cargo area in the back. Therefore, just like most minivans in the United States, we still have sliding doors on the side. They're, of course, powered in our particular model. And we have plenty of room back here in the third row. At 203.8 inches long, this is about two inches longer than the Toyota Sienna. This is the largest minivan sold in America. There was a time where Chrysler made minivans in different lengths, but that's no longer the case. The Pacifica just comes in one length. But, of course, again, you can get the caravan still. As we see with most minivans, Chrysler has done some work to try and hide the fact that this is a very large vertical surface. We, of course, have tail lamps that mimic some of the other Chrysler models with this light pipe that runs right around inside. We have the backup lamps right down there. Very well integrated parking sensors and, of course, a fairly flush bumper in the back to help improve cargo practicality on the inside. The big news under this hood is not that this engine has received a few more horsepower versus last year. It's not that we now have a nine speed automatic transmission, just like we see in the Chrysler 200, nor is it the fact that we will see an automatic start stop system added to this engine soon in the 2017 model year. The really big news under here is that you can actually get a hybrid minivan for the first time in America, and we will be driving that very, very soon. Expect to see that review around mid November. Even without the hybrid system, fuel economy is very good in the Pacifica thanks to the 9-speed automatic transmission and this new V6 engine under the hood. According to the EPA, you should get 18 miles to the gallon in the city, 28 on the highway, and 22 miles per gallon combined. Even though I found the driver's seat to be just a hair less comfortable than the Kia Sedona, I'm actually going to give this 10 out of 10 points when it comes to the front seat comfort index. The reason for that is that this seat has more adjustability than we find in any other minivan in this segment and a wider range of motion. In addition to having a tilt telescopic steering column that really comes out a great deal from the dashboard, we also have available four-way adjustable lumbar support, which makes this seat an awful lot easier to adjust for shorter or taller people. Second row comfort comes in at 8 out of 10 points. These seats are not quite as comfortable as top end seats in the Sedona or the Sienna. The reason for that is Chrysler's stow and go system. These seats fold into the floor so you don't have to take them out of the vehicle. Now that said, there's still a number of nice touches in the second row. The second row seats are reclinable. They actually have a decent range of motion to them as well. And we have a center seat right here in the second row. That means the Pacifica will seat eight passengers. Now you cannot get this center seat if you get the panoramic sunroof. Moving all the way over to the right side, I have about five inches of legroom left, even though this front seat is all the way back in its tracks. You'll definitely find more legroom in the Pacifica than your average three row crossover. Not only does the center seat recline, it also folds forward to provide the second row passengers with a padded armrest section, two large cup holders, and a small storage cubby. If you put this back into place, another nice touch is that we actually have latch anchors for child seats in this center seat position, not just the outboard seats. Before we stow and go, let's talk about access to the third row. You can actually move this second row seat with a child seat still into position using this lever right here. That makes it an awful lot handier than some of the other minivans out there. Or you can also fold the seat completely forward if you want to hop on over to the rear. And then you can actually pull this lever right here to move it even further out of the way. Once we've hopped into the third row, it is pretty easy to bring the second row seats right back into position. When I have the seat in this position, I still have about five inches of legroom left between the second row and the third row. When it comes to third row comfort, this vehicle is not just a little bit more comfortable than your average three row crossover, it's considerably more comfortable. Not only do I have several inches more rear legroom in this third row, well, I also have several inches more in the second row. I have several inches more headroom, and that's the big thing for me at six feet tall. Although these seats are a little bit closer to the floor than in the second row, they're also several inches higher off the ground than in your average three row crossover. That means it's much more comfortable for adults to sit in the back. And of course, this is a three across rear bench, 
but it is a little bit more accommodating right here in the center position than your average three row crossover as well. And I still have several inches of headroom left. Now, while I'm back here, I should point out these two ceiling mounted seat belts. The center seat belt right there for the second row and the center seat belt for the third row are both ceiling mounted seat belts. And that's not necessarily my preference. That does cause child seats especially to skew slightly out of the way. It also is a little bit less convenient. Now it's time for the Pacifica's real party trick, the second row stow and go system. The first step is to press a little button right over here on the B pillar that causes the front seat to move up and out of the way. You can definitely put a large computer bag like this one right there under the floor. Of course, the real party trick is the seat, so we'll go ahead and fold that first. And we pull this little lever right there, stuff the seat down there in the cargo area, and then we simply fold the floor back in place. As you can see, that gives you a completely flat floor in the Pacifica. So at a whim, you can just head on over to Ikea and buy all those folding furniture modules you're interested in. Seats right there below. So if we want to pull it back out, all we have to do is pull this lever, pull the seat back into position, tip it right back up, and then we pull that lid down and lock it back into place. And of course, as with other minivans out there, the third row also folds right down here into the floor. We just pull this one handle, tip the seat back. They basically collapse right there, level with the opening of the rear cargo area. Although the practicality of the system is obviously limited a little bit, by this singular seat right here in the second row that does have to be removed from the vehicle manually. We have to unlatch this seat belt, lock it right there into place in the ceiling, and then we can actually pull the cord and pull this seat out of the vehicle. However, this is significantly handier than any other minivan out there because all the other seats are just hiding right out of the way. And when the seats are in place, you can actually put things right there under the floor. That of course means that impulse shopping at the hardware store is an awful lot easier in the Pacifica because you can at the spur of a moment just decide you wanna buy something that's four feet wide by eight feet long, like a four by eight sheet of plywood, stick it right here in the minivan and you don't have to worry about where those seats are gonna go. The Pacifica may be the longest minivan sold in America, but its cargo area is not as large as some of the other options in the US. However, you will find more cargo room back here than any other three row crossover and actually about the same kind of cargo room as a full size SUV that's a full foot longer than this minivan. That's really the key thing to remember about minivans. If you're a family that needs all three rows and you need to carry cargo with you, then you really do need to get a minivan because there is no three row crossover that can carry six people and six people's worth of luggage for a weekend. Behind the third row, we find just over 32 cubic feet of storage space. You'll notice that you can't actually see that I have a 22 inch roller bag in the cargo well because it is so deep. Now, if you have 22 or smaller inch roller bags, you can actually put them in that long position and still get them down there towards the floor. If you fold down the third row, you'll find over 87 cubic feet of storage space in the Pacifica. That's similar to what you find in your average large three row crossover if you fold down both of the rows in the back. That means if you had something like a Toyota Highlander, you could carry two people and 80 something cubic feet of cargo, or you could get a Pacifica and carry five people and 87 cubic feet of cargo. If you fold down both of the rows, then you'll get a whopping 140 cubic feet of space. As we take a look around the interior, keep in mind that we are in an upper level trim, but we are not in the top end trim, and we are in the eight passenger version, which means that we do not get the panoramic sunroof. However, we still have the tri-zone automatic climate control and vents in the ceiling and in the floor for the second and third rows. This trim level has heated front and second row seats. The seat inserts are perforated, but these seats are not actively ventilated. Moving on over to the front doors, we have a majority of soft touch plastics. The upper portion of the door right here in this lighter color is a soft touch plastic, as is this armrest, although we do find plenty of hard plastics lower on the door. The Tritone dashboard is made from hard touch injection molded plastics. And over here on the passenger side, we have a moderately sized glove compartment. This wasn't able to fit a large iPad inside, but you can put large instruction manuals in there. This trim level has the 13 speaker Alpine sound system. So we have a center channel speaker right here. And then we have the latest version of Chrysler's Uconnect infotainment system. This looks similar to Uconnect systems of the past, but there are a few key differences. The interface in this system seems much snappier than previous versions of Uconnect. We have a 360 degree camera system integrated right here into the system. And there are a few other options that are just a little bit different than the last time we took a look at Uconnect. Below the infotainment screen, we find a rotary dial shifter. 
drive is all the way over here, the low mode right beyond it. We don't have a manual mode in this particular vehicle. We have an electric parking brake button right here, and if you get keyless entry and keyless go, you'll find that button over here on the left. To the right of the shift knob, we find the volume knob with mute button in the center, tune and browse knob right over here on this side, a few buttons for the vehicle, the active parking system, park sense enable disable, lane keeping assistance enable disable, and traction control enable disable. We also have a button to turn off the infotainment screen, the hazard light button, and a back button for use with that interface. Below the shifter zone is where we start finding the wide variety of cubbies and places to stick your widgets in this vehicle. You'll notice I can't quite fit an iPhone 7 Plus in that particular slot, although you could put a wide variety of other things. We have a USB input right over here and one auxiliary input. Moving below that, we have a Blu-ray disc player because, of course, we do have the rear seat entertainment system in our vehicle and a USB port for that rear seat entertainment system. The eject button's right over here. Below that, we have a large storage bin where you can very easily put large smartphones, glasses, receipts, wallets, that sort of thing, tuck them easily out of the way. Unfortunately, there's no USB port inside there. The storage bin also has a variety of different sized coin holders. And then below that, you'll notice we have this very deep storage well that's perfectly sized for large purses, large bags, and even takeout food bags. We have a 12 volt power outlet right there at the front and a USB charge only port. Continuing on back from that, we have another storage slot where you can very easily put glasses holders, sunglasses holders, smartphones, that sort of thing. Then we have two large cup holders right between the front seats. We have armrests that are actually attached to the seats that can fold up and out of the way. We have yet one more storage area right here behind those cup holders, very easily able to accommodate things like large smartphones, fast track transponders, etc. And this well is actually lit. This is a very small LED light right here. You can see it glowing right there on the fast track. So it's very easy to find things at night. Now you notice this storage area is not terribly deep. That's because there's another storage cubby right there behind that. We can unlatch it and we can use these two cup holders or we can pull it all the way out and you have access to the storage bin. The cup holder area is removable. The design of the instrument cluster is very similar to other Chrysler models because we're in one of the top end trims. We have a large LCD right here between the speedometer and the tachometer. Well, Chrysler has obviously gone button minimalist with the infotainment system, there are a ton of buttons on the steering wheel. Now you'll notice that there are no infotainment controls on the steering wheel, that's because they're actually on the back of the wheel. On the back you'll find an additional six buttons. You'll find the volume up, down, and source change button over here on the right side of the wheel. The left side of the wheel is where you'll find track up, down, as well as preset next or playlist next. This is also where you'll find the four-way control button system and the OK button for that multifunction display right there behind the steering wheel. You'll also find dedicated phone hangup, pickup, and voice command buttons on the left side. And then on the right side of the steering wheel, we have the cruise control buttons. Because our vehicle has the radar adaptive cruise control, we have this additional set of three buttons right over here on the bottom. Something that many shoppers out there don't realize is that the average minivan will either handle just as well or better than some of the three row crossovers out on the market. That said, of course, some of the three row crossovers out there will obviously perform better than any of the minivans in this segment. Something like a Mazda CX-9 is definitely going to handle better than any minivan currently sold in America. And something like a V8 Dodge Durango or the twin turbo Ford Explorer will accelerate faster than any minivan sold in America. Before we dive right into performance figures, let's first talk about the active safety features that are available in the Pacifica. This vehicle has full range adaptive cruise control, which means this will bring the vehicle to a complete stop and actually hold it there. This is a little bit different than some of the systems on the market, which will bring you to a complete stop and then release the brakes. This will actually apply full brake pressure regardless of whether the traffic in front of you is moving along. If you want to actually resume your travel, you hit the resume button or you tap the accelerator pedal and then it takes off. In addition to that, we have a lane keeping assistance system, which not only tells you that you've drifted out of your lane, but also steers you to try and keep you in the lane. Part of the radar adaptive cruise control system is an autonomous braking system. So if this car thinks you're going to rear end the car in front of you, it'll jam on the brakes to try and either prevent the accident or mitigate the speed of the accident. This system, like the collision mitigating braking system we see in certain Honda models, is effective at higher speeds as well. So if you're driving along the freeway and it thinks you're going to ram that car in front of you, it will definitely apply the brakes to try and slow you down. Last but not least, a very handy feature in a vehicle this large is that the parking sensor system actually has a brake integration as well. So that means if you're backing up the vehicle in low speed situations like a parking lot and it comes a little bit too close to a person that's large enough 
or a garbage can or another vehicle will actually try and stop the vehicle before you hit it. As I said earlier, the Pacifica performs very much like a three row crossover. When we did our acceleration test, we scored 6.85 seconds, zero to 60. That means this is a hair faster than the Toyota Sienna and a little bit faster than the Kia Sedona. You can really thank the nine speed automatic transmission for that fast acceleration score, because even though this is a little bit more powerful than last year's Chrysler Town & Country, the big difference is the transmission. This nine speed not only has a lower first gear, but also a higher final gear in order to give you better acceleration and better fuel economy than its predecessor. I have a separate video on my channel about this nine speed automatic transmission in detail, but the basic thing you need to know is that the general design of this nine speed is a little different than every other automatic sold in America. And as a result, some shifts will feel a little bit different. The software that Chrysler has developed for this nine speed automatic seems to be the best so far. This is smoother not only than the same nine speed that we find in the Chrysler 200 or the Jeep Cherokee, but also under the hood of the Honda Pilot and the Acura MDX, which essentially share the same nine speed automatic. The difference seems to be that this software revision is more willing to downshift the transmission and those shifts are also smoother than the other versions that we've seen. In our braking tests, the Pacifica stopped from 60 to zero in 131 feet, which is fairly average for the minivan segment and actually fairly average for the three row crossover segment as well. When it comes to handling, I'm gonna give the Pacifica a B. This does not handle quite as well as the Kia Sedona, which is I think the best handling minivan in this segment. The average minivan in America is not the marshmallowy soft box that we remember from the 1980s. They really have come a long way. Even though the Pacifica has a suspension designed for a relatively high payload because eight passengers do weigh a considerable amount, the ride is fairly good. I'm actually gonna give this an A plus because I think this has the best composed ride of any of the minivans. This does not feel upset over broken pavement like the last generation town and country sometimes could or certain versions of the Toyota Sienna can. Cabin noise has also significantly improved over the 2016 town and country. We scored 70 decibels at 50 miles an hour, which makes this very quiet for the minivan segment. Making a minivan that's quiet is actually harder than you might think because the door seals are larger than your average sedan or average three row crossover because of those sliding doors in the vehicle. In terms of fuel economy, the Pacifica has been frankly impressive. We've been averaging 22.1 miles per gallon over about 700 miles of very mixed driving in this vehicle, zero to 60 testing it, a lot of high speed highway travel, and of course, a lot of mountain travel like we're driving on right here. The key to this high fuel economy number is the efficient V6 engine and the new nine speed automatic transmission. This nine speed automatic has a very, very tall final gear. So when you're driving on the freeway, whether you're going 70 or even 80 miles an hour, you'll be getting better fuel economy in this vehicle than a minivan with a six speed automatic transmission. The bottom line with the Pacifica out on the road is that this is one of the best minivans to drive. The acceleration and braking scores are very similar to the average family sedan in America. However, you can seat nearly twice as many people in the back. The Pacifica's handling prowess is not really gonna set anybody's heart on fire, but to tell the truth, neither is the average three row crossover. Although minivans are more practical than the average three row crossover, and they're honestly just about as pleasing to drive, even I have to admit that the image that comes to my mind when I think about minivan is that 1988 Plymouth Voyager that my parents bought. The image that always comes to my mind is my mom driving the minivan, my brother and I fighting in the back seat, and our family dog getting car sick and barfing in my mom's very large 1980s purse that was sitting right there between the front seats. The 2017 Pacifica starts at $28,595. That's certainly more expensive than the 2016 Town & Country, which it replaces, and significantly more expensive than the Dodge Grand Caravan, which is continuing to live on for 2017. Now, Chrysler has not really said anything about how long the Grand Caravan will continue to live on, nor whether or not it will be replaced with a Chrysler Pacifica derived minivan at some future date. Because Chrysler's manufacturing line is very flexible and can produce both the old minivan and the new minivan at the same time in the same factory, that means it really could live on for quite some time as the discount minivan alternative. Although the base price is certainly up for 2017, the level of standard equipment in the base model is also significantly improved. All models get a power driver's seat with the power four-way adjustable lumbar support that makes this the most adjustable driver's seat you can get in this particular segment. All models also come standard with the second row stow and go seat. In addition to that, all of the Pacifica models will be the quietest minivans on the market because they all come standard with active noise cancellation. Unlike minivans of the past, all models come standard with three zone climate control, although it is manual in the LX and the Touring model. If you want the auto climate control, you'll find that in the Touring L. That's also where things like leather seats and the fog lamps start. 
The model that we were able to drive for a week was the two-ring L Plus model with a number of the option packages added to it. The L Plus model started at around $37,000 as you can see on this chart right here and as equipped as we were driving it, it was right around $42,000 which is basically where the Limited starts. However, the Limited gets a different feature set than the L Plus model that we were driving. Most notably, the better leather seats, the HID headlamps, the integrated vacuum, etc., and the power folding third row seats, which we did not get to experience this week. Let's start out our comparison section by talking about the 900-pound gorilla in the room, which is the Dodge Grand Caravan. The Grand Caravan has become a little bit more expensive for 2017. It used to start at $23,595, but they bumped up the price about $1,500 for the 2017 model year. The reason they did that is because the absolute base stripper AVP model is no longer available, and now things start with the SE trim. The Grand Caravan and the Town & Country were one of the older models in the minivan segment, and it really shows when you compare the brand new Pacifica to the older Grand Caravan. Not only is the Pacifica more refined in terms of handling and in feel and acceleration, its cabin's quieter, it feels more engaging to drive, but we also get updated versions of all the features that the Grand Caravan and Town & Country were known for, most notably that stow-and-go second row seat. It's optional in the Grand Caravan, but it's standard in the Pacifica, and the way that it works is slightly different, and it's definitely improved in the Pacifica. The second row stow-and-go seats are much more comfortable versus the Grand Caravan's stow-and-go second row seats. They're also a little bit easier to operate, and the third row seats in the Pacifica are more comfortable than the ones that we see in the Grand Caravan. Even though both the Dodge and the Chrysler use a 3.6 liter V6 engine, it's not the same V6 engine. The one in the Pacifica has variable valve timing and a few other features that help it give you three miles per gallon better highway fuel economy, and in real world driving, about two miles per gallon overall better. Although the Pacifica is overall the better minivan, it will certainly cost you more. It's going to be at least $4,000 more expensive than a comparable caravan. Next up, we have the Toyota Sienna. The Sienna is actually a little bit more expensive than the Pacifica. Even though the Pacifica has become more expensive than the town and country and more expensive than the Grand Caravan, it is still less expensive than the minivans that we see from Toyota and from Honda. The Sienna is one of the older minivan designs in America, however, Toyota has refreshed it a few times since it was first launched. A few years ago, we got a revised interior in the Sienna, and that really helped the Sienna compete with the other vehicles in this segment in terms of its overall interior feel. For 2017, we get a new engine and a new transmission under the hood of the Sienna. The new engine and transmission seriously improve fuel economy and acceleration in the Sienna, and in those two areas, it is very comparable to the all-new Chrysler Pacifica. One interesting twist in the Sienna continues to be that it is the only minivan that offers optional all-wheel drive. Now in order to get all-wheel drive you do have to get run flat tires and give up your spare tire but if you're looking for a minivan that can seat seven and have all-wheel drive it really is your only choice. Aside from that the rest of the Sienna really is a little bit old school. We don't have the same kind of safety gadgets, 360 degree cameras, uh, full speed radar adaptive cruise control, all that sort of stuff that we see in the new Pacifica and in the Honda Odyssey, you don't necessarily find in the Sienna. The Sienna does not offer second row seats that fold flat into the floor that would actually be incompatible with the all-wheel drive system and the location of the spare tire in the Sienna. However, because of that, the seats are much more comfortable than what we find in even the Pacifica. In addition, you can get a top-level package in the Sienna which gives you reclining captain's chairs with integrated ottomans. Those are definitely more comfortable than any second row seat in the Chrysler. The 2016 Honda Odyssey starts at $29,950, so a little bit more expensive than the 2017 Pacifica. We do expect to see an all-new Honda Odyssey coming very, very soon. It should be announced within the next month or so, but we don't know when that will be on sale. Expect it to be a little bit more expensive than the 2016 model year, however. Even though the Odyssey is being completely redesigned, Honda has been very, very aggressive at chasing Chrysler in the minivan segment, and it really shows because the 2016 Odyssey competes quite well with the 2017 Pacifica, even though, again, it is getting replaced soon. It competes well in terms of acceleration, handling, as well as the feature set that we see in that minivan. The infotainment technology that we see in the Odyssey, both in the front passenger area and in the back passenger area, is a step behind what we see in the Pacifica. However, it's notably above what we see in the Caravan or the Sienna. Even though the Odyssey uses an older engine design and a six-speed automatic transmission, the fuel economy is actually fairly good in the Odyssey thanks to a cylinder deactivation system. We expect to see the next generation of Honda's cylinder deactivation system in the 2017 model year vehicle, although we really don't know what transmissions it will include. 
One thing's for sure, however, you're definitely going to pay a premium for that Honda logo on the front of your Odyssey because it is about $1,000 to $3,000 more expensive than a comparably priced Chrysler. In addition, we don't have the functionality of those second row seats that fold flat into the floor. The second row seats in the Odyssey are a little bit more comfortable than the Pacificas, but they're not quite as practical because you can't shove them out of the way at a moment's notice. Next up, we have the Kia Sedona at $26,800. It is one of the less expensive options in this segment, and it does undercut the Pacifica by about $2,000 when you comparably equip them. Although the Sedona is certainly a minivan, Kia is really trying to be the un-minivan in this particular segment. They've given the exterior of the Sedona a very crossover-like look, and they've also given the interior a very crossover-like look with a solid center console and a console-mounted shifter, very much like you see in their Kia crossovers. The overall design of the Sedona center console means that you can't put large bags between the driver and the front passenger like you can in the other minivans in this segment, but it is going to give you more of an SUV-like feel. In addition to that, the second row seats don't come out of the Sedona, and that is an odd twist. Instead of coming out of the vehicle, they collapse up and then push against the front seats to give you more cargo room in the back. But that means you cannot put a 4x8 sheet of anything inside the Sedona without the rear hatch hanging out open. Obviously, that is going to make the Sedona less practical if you routinely carry cargo without the seats in the vehicle or if you want to be able to go to Ikea or the Home Depot and get large items and just shove them completely inside your minivan. You just can't do that in the Sedona in the same way that you can in any of the other minivans in this segment. On the plus side for the Sedona, we also have excellent handling. It is one of the best handling minivans in this segment, but on the downside, it is notably less efficient than the other minivans. You can really tell when you take a look at the city and the highway fuel economy numbers, it's going to be a few miles per gallon at least below the Chrysler Pacifica, below the Sienna, and below the Honda Odyssey. At $26,580, the Nissan Quest has approximately the same starting price as we see in the Kia Sedona. Even though the Nissan Quest is one of the older entries in this segment, it gets fairly expensive, and it will actually get just about as expensive as top-end trims of the Chrysler Pacifica. And that's really my problem with the Quest. It's just as expensive as the mainline entries in this segment, but there really is no area where the Quest excels. It's not the fastest entry, it's not the most fuel-efficient entry, it's not the most comfortable entry, it's not the largest entry, and a lot of that could be forgiven if it was the least expensive entry, but that award goes to the Dodge Grand Caravan. As a result, the Nissan Quest is the only model in this segment that I would not recommend. In my mind, there are solid reasons to buy every other entry in this segment. If you want an inexpensive minivan, go buy a Grand Caravan. It's not going to be as nice inside, as nice to drive, as fuel efficient, etc. as most of the other minivans in this segment, but it is going to be inexpensive and you can get those second row seats that fold flat in the floor. Two big reasons to buy the Grand Caravan. The Chrysler Pacifica is simply the freshest minivan in this segment. It's also the most fuel efficient, has the most gadgets, it's the most comfortable, etc. And it has those second row seats, so there's a reason to pay the extra to get the Pacifica. The Sienna has those comfortable second row seats, and it has available all-wheel drive. The Odyssey is one of the best all-around minivans, and the Kia Sedona is one of the best handling minivans, has the comfortable second row seats. However, when it comes to the Nissan Quest, I can't think of any solid reasons to buy one over the rest of the competition. That's not to say that the Nissan Quest is a bad minivan generally, however, it just doesn't excel in any particular way to make me pick it over any of the other options. My bottom line at this moment in the minivan segment is that my top pick is the Chrysler Pacifica, and I would also keep my eyeball on the new Chrysler Pacifica plug-in hybrid. I should be driving that very soon. Be sure and stay tuned for a complete video on that coming up very soon. My runner-up in this segment would be the current generation Honda Odyssey. The Honda is a very tough competitor in this segment, even though it is one of the older entries. And again, if you're looking for simply the bargain minivan in this segment, definitely put the Grand Caravan on your shopping list, even though it is getting a little bit old. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. Again, I'm Alex Dykes. Be sure and hit that subscribe button down there at the bottom of your screen. Check out those related videos on the side of your screen, and stay tuned for an Odyssey review coming up in the next probably six months or so. There's a quick video on the refreshed Toyota Sienna with the new eight-speed automatic transmission, and there should be a first drive review of the all-new 2017 plug-in hybrid Chrysler Pacifica minivan coming up very, very soon. I'll see you next week.